Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 13.4 GM. This is the golden master or final version that will be released to the public and that will be released to the public on Tuesday, March 24th, according to nine to five Mac. Now I had thought it would be earlier this week due to the power beats that Apple released and needing those, this update to actually support those, but it looks like they pushed it to Tuesday or maybe they planned that all along. It's hard to say, but this is available to developers right now and may or may not be available to public beta testers. Apple in the past has not necessarily made the GM or final version available to public beta testers. However, they do call this beta six on their website. So on the developer portal, it says beta six for some reason. And Apple also released watchOS 6.2 GM today, along with Mac OS Catalina 10.15.4 beta six and beta six of Apple TV OS 13.4. So it is the GM version. I'll show you that with the final build number. Along with all of these changes, this update came in at 4.09 gigabytes on my iPhone 11 pro max. When you're going from a beta to a, a public version, it's usually very large, just like this one. So on all of these devices, I had almost four gigabytes of data to install. So it was a pretty big update. Now let's take a look at what the build number is, and then we'll talk about all the features. The build number is 17 E two five five, and that's the final version that will be released to the public. And with this update come a lot of changes. So let's first start with iOS and then there's a lot of bug fixes at the end. So we'll cover iOS, iPad OS, and then the bug fixes. And the first change is with Memojis. There's some new Memoji stickers. So let's go into messages and you can see there's new Memoji stickers. Now on my iPhone on the left here, you'll see there are less stickers. So they've added nine new stickers. You've got someone behind a, a Mac or an iPad and some different changes as well. I don't really use Memoji stickers, but there are some new ones if you want to use them. Now they've made some updates to the TV app along with its settings. So if we go into the TV app, I already have it open. You'll see we now have family sharing. So family sharing's there. You can see who you're sharing your different movies and TV purchases with, and it just shows all your different family members there. We also have have some settings updates and you'll see in settings for TV, we now have streaming options as well as download options. So you can now change it to have higher or lower quality based on how much data you have left. And as well, you have the same settings for cellular. So you have Wi-Fi options for fast downloads or high quality and things like that. So it just depends on what you need for yourself. If you don't have data, maybe you don't have an unlimited plan. You can modify this for whatever you need. Now, Apple has finally added iCloud folder sharing. This was promised with iOS 13 and it's finally here. So if we go into the files app and then I go to my desktop, which is shared across all of my different Macs, we long press on iPhone comparison here, and then we go to share. Under share, we have the option to add people. If I tap on add people, we can now add people and you can give them different permissions as well. So along with sharing this folder, you can decide who actually can modify the folder, who can change different applications or, or change different documents within it. So for example, you can limit access only to people you explicitly invite or grant access to, or you can have permissions to choose who can make changes and upload files. So you can do all of this now with this update. So it's really nice that they've added this. Now within mail, there are a lot of fixes I'll talk about later, but they've also updated it so that there's a new bar at the bottom if you're in an email. So now you have a little bar at the bottom with your trash folder, reply and new mail. So if you reply, you can see they've moved everything around and it's just a little bit easier to, to actually tap on trashing a message or deleting a message. And it's a lot better than before where we only had two icons. So they've updated this and I think it's much better. Now, other than that, responses to encrypted emails are automatically encrypted if you have configured S mime. So if you have S mime configured, it will automatically encrypt an email when you reply. So that's really nice. Now with the app store, they've updated it a little bit with universal purchases. So for example, developers can decide whether or not to allow you to purchase an app and share that across not only your iPad, but also an iPod touch Mac or Apple TV. Also, if you subscribe to Apple Arcade, you'll see recently played games at the top and there's now a list view for see all games. Now shortcuts has a small update and let's see if I can find shortcuts. I don't use it too much, but if we go into shortcuts, we can now make a Shazam it option. So you'll see it says Shazam down here. Let me just create a new one and we'll add an action within actions. You can now Shazam it. So you want to listen to specific music and let it tell you what it is. You can do that 
by pressing a button in shortcut. So you now have that option. Now, if you have Apple CarPlay, that's been updated a little bit too with third party navigation app support for the dashboard itself. So if you're using the dashboard, you can have third party navigation right there. Also, you can have call information on the dashboard if the app developer adds it. So that's an option. There's also updates to augmented reality for quick look support. A developer has to add that though. And that pertains more to the new iPad. And then with the keyboard, there's now predictive typing support for Arabic. So if you speak Arabic or you're reading Arabic, you'll have that option. Then also there's some additional changes on the iPad with the keyboard. And then there's mentions of the car key support within code of the beta, but I'm not so sure that it's in the final release. So you could use your phone as a car key along with your car. So if you have a Tesla or maybe one of the other cars, such as a Lincoln that has that, that option with NFC for your car key, you could use it with your phone. Now, other than that, if you're using a VPN, there's now a new status when you're disconnected. So let me start a VPN. I'll turn on a VPN here. We'll give it just a second and you'll see the VPN is turned on. If I turn it off, there's now a new icon that should show me when it turns off. Although it didn't work that time. Let me connect and it shows that it's turned on. Maybe I'll give it a second here. And so you'll see that I have a VPN. If I turn that back off and normally it will show that it's turned off, but it is a new icon that's there. Now there are a lot of fixes, but let's first talk about what's new in iPad OS because everything that I've already covered applies to iPad OS, but there is a major change to iPad OS. Now this morning, Apple announced new iPads pro with a new camera, some new updated specs, but also support for a new keyboard with a trackpad. And with that trackpad, they announced support for a new style of cursor on the iPad. Now we thought this was coming with iOS 14, but it's now here with 13.4. So if I plug in my USB C to lightning cable, along with my trackpad from my Mac pro. So here's the trackpad from the Mac pro. Let's get out of this here. We're in keynote. I can now move it around on my iPad. Now you can do this wirelessly, but because it's already paired with my Mac pro, if I unplug this, it will just repair with the Mac pro. So I'll just leave it wired for now, but they also added support for the magic mouse, the magic mouse two, the trackpad trackpad two, and third party Bluetooth and USB C support. And we now have gestures. So if you take two fingers, you can swipe between the screens, you can scroll, you can do four fingers, just like all of the gestures on the Mac. So if I hover over an app like keynote, all I need to do is click, go down to continue. And it's the same as basically using it on a Mac. So it's really nice. We'll just click on my presentation, wait for it to load. We can double click to edit. And then we've got the keyboard here. So it's really nice. It's, it brings basically Mac functionality to an iPad and you can scroll with two fingers, set up gestures, you can see I can scroll back and forth. Everything just works super fluid and fast. Now there's also multi-touch gestures for zoom and everything else. So all of the things you expect you can do. So bring that back, go back. It's really nice. And I'll be using this much more in the future. Now we're only missing basically a version for final cut pro and logic pro for iPad. So I'm looking forward to hopefully some pro apps, but basically we've got all the same functionality. They've also updated everything within the OS. So photos is updated with new tabs and new keyboard gestures and all sorts of things. And if you want me to do a separate video on iPad OS, let me know in the comments below. Now, along with the trackpad support, there's new options for it as well. So you can tell it to hide the cursor for two seconds or after two seconds, you can change the color. If you don't want any color right now, it's sort of see-through, but if I go to blue, and then I move the trackpad around, you'll see it's highlighted in blue and you just have a bunch of different options for the mice and trackpad. So it's nice to have all of these different things supported on iPad, making it basically a normal computer. Now with all of those different updates, it comes a ton of different bug fixes. And while Apple normally mentions most of them, there's probably still some they didn't mention, but there's a lot of them. So I'm going to run through them very quickly. So it fixes an issue in the camera where the viewfinder may appear as a black screen after launching it. So this was happening to some people. It's now fixed. It also addresses an issue where photos may appear to use excess storage. And that's something I saw people were saying photos were taking up a huge amount of storage. So that's now resolved. It also resolves an issue in photos that may prevent sharing an image to messages. If mess, if I message is disabled. So maybe you're using SMS or MMS that will now work as well. 
It also addresses an issue in mail where the conversation list may display empty rows. It resolves an issue where mail may crash when tapping the share button in quick look. It fixes an issue in settings where cellular data may incorrectly display as off. So if you're using cellular, it should stay on if you have it turned on. It also addresses an issue in Safari where web pages may not be inverted when both dark mode and smart invert are active. Now, if dark mode is turned on, they fixed it where if you copied some text from web content on a third party app, it was invisible when you went to paste it. It will now show properly. They also fixed an issue in Safari where CAPTCHA tiles may display incorrectly. It also addresses an issue in reminders where it may not issue new notifications. It also it resolves an issue where reminders may send notifications for completed reminders. It also fixes an issue where iCloud Drive appears to be available in pages, numbers, and Keynote even when you're not signed into it. Then it fixes an issue in Apple Music, where music videos may not stream in high quality. It also resolves an issue where CarPlay may lose connection in certain vehicles. It also fixes an issue where CarPlay in Maps may move away briefly from the current area. So maybe you had it centered where you are and it would move away briefly. It also fixes an issue in the Home app where you tap on an activity notification and it brings you to the wrong security camera. So that should be fixed. It also resolves an issue where shortcuts may not appear when tapping on the share menu within a screenshot. So maybe you take a screenshot and then you go to share it. All of your options will now be there. And then finally, it improves the Burmese keyboard so punctuation symbols are now accessible from numbers and symbols. There's also some additional language updates within the keyboard on iPadOS. Now, it's not necessarily listed on iOS, but it is for iPadOS. So it's really hard to say what's going on there, but see if those options are available to you. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you use that. Now, all of those changes are available right away once you have this update. And I think it's a huge improvement. And that just goes to show how many bugs there were with iOS 13. iOS 13.4 betas have been the most stable and the highest performing of any I've seen. So performance is great. I think you'll find it much smoother. We'll take a look at the benchmarks in just a moment. But first, let's talk about battery. If we go into the settings and take a look at the battery, you can see my battery health is at 100% and I've been running beta five for the past week. If we take a look at the last 10 days, you'll see that my usage is about three and a half hours and three hours and 56 minutes of screen off time. But in that time, I only used about 30% of the battery. And then by the time I go to bed, it's still got a lot left. So if I was to use it to a hundred percent, I could times this by three almost and get nine, to maybe 12 hours, depending on what you're doing. And that's usually what I've been telling people. 13.4 has been really good for the majority of people on the betas. And I would expect that to be with the final as well, but it will take a few days to know that. Now, other than that, the performance has been really good. And so I have the iPhone six S plus here that has the oldest processor in it and performance is pretty good. If I scroll through everything, this is the first time I've opened music. It loaded like I expected things like Minecraft should load pretty fast. We'll wait for it here. You'll see it will zip right along and frame rates tend to be pretty good in this update. So this is not a very intensive game, but you can see if I create a new world, create new world, and then I hit create, we'll let it load for just a second. Load times are the same or better than iOS 13.3.1. So expect this to be a pretty good update for most people. Now, other than speed on the iPhone six S plus the 10 R gets the same updates as does all of the different devices. So everything is nice and smooth and fast and expect it to be much better optimized for everything from the iPhone seven to the iPhone SE and everything in between newer or older. So in general, this is a really good update. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. Now I'm using Geekbench five and I ran this right after I updated. So these numbers can increase, but this is what I got initially. I scored 1,290 for single core, 3,253 for multi-core on the 11 pro max. Now, if we take a look at the history, we'll go to CPU on March 10th, you can see that the numbers were a little bit higher, but again, this is right after I installed it. So I would expect these numbers to go up. Most people are seeing them a little bit higher. Now let's take a look at all of these devices on the left. We have the iPad pro 12.9 from 2018, followed by the six S plus then the iPhone 10 R and the iPhone 11 pro max. This should give you a general idea of what your scores will look like if you run the same test. 
Now keep in mind, I ran this right after I installed the update and these could improve over time after everything in the background is done configuring. That's it for iOS 13.4, all the major changes. There may be some small tweaks here and there to different icons and things like that, but those are all of the major changes with this update. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you're experiencing poor battery life, expect that to increase over the next couple of days as it finishes what it's doing in the background. That's pretty normal with an update this big. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on the wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.